At medical treatment facilities, a protocol for treatment of heat illness should be established in advance of any patient arrival. Assemble medical equipment required to treat heat illness or create a list for quick reference. Define a team of providers and a system to contact them for immediate response. Identify a team leader and other key positions and responsibilities. Resources may vary at your location, but keep in mind these best practices for medical care. Step one, when the MTF is contacted about an incoming suspected heat stroke patient, assemble the team of providers, equipment, and ice to a defined location. Step two, upon arrival, the next steps may take place simultaneously depending on the number of personnel and the cooling strategy. The preferred methods for cooling are ice water immersion and ice water dousing. If these techniques are unavailable, ice packs can be utilized. Immediate attention must focus on the ABCs with basic life support. An AED or automated external defibrillator should be readily available. Take the rectal temperature and use a continuous monitoring thermometer if available. Temp 103.5. Tim, 103.5 I. ID, right AC, 20 gauge. Keep vein open. Step three, take other vital signs. Assess physical and mental condition of the patient. Record all vital signs and rectal temperatures. Draw a blood sample and take it to the lab immediately for a predetermined heat panel. Start an IV if not already initiated. Complete a finger stick glucose test and an urgent blood sodium level. The rate of IV fluids should be determined by the patient's clinical presentation with special attention to the serum sodium level. Patients with a low serum sodium level who are at risk for exertional hyponatremia require a cautious balance of IV fluids. The input of a trained specialist and administration of hypertonic saline may be needed. In the case of exertional hyponatremia, overly aggressive hydration via IV fluids can lead to brainstem herniation or death. Step four, remove all excess clothing and begin an aggressive cooling protocol. Some treatment facilities leave on underwear or light clothing to hold ice packs in place. Placement of ice packs can vary, but be sure to put them behind the neck, one at each upper arm region, one at each femoral artery, and one behind each knee. The ice pack behind the neck is important Hold the ice packs in place if needed. If available, use misters or spray bottles with a large fan. Moving the air is important to cooling. Ice sheets and ice towels can also be used. Continuous access to the body is critical when cooling. A mesh stretcher is recommended as it allows air and water flow, quick movement of the patient, and easier access in the event an AED is required. A pool or tub can also be used. In the event of cardiac arrest, however, moving a wet patient from a tub and drying them quickly can be difficult. There is also a risk of contamination from bodily fluids. When a patient is in a pool or tub, ladle the cold water up and over continuously. Step five, assess the patient continually for mental, cardiac, and pulmonary status. Heat stroke patients have highly variable clinical presentations. Some may require intubation, while others may require the use of an AED for cardiac arrest. Some patients may progress to coma. There is no definitive algorithm except to monitor continually with a focus on ABCs, clinical information, and labs. Patients may become disoriented or combative due to heat stress. A mental status change of this nature may occur and is considered an emergency. Follow the protocol for your location which may include calling additional staff for assistance in restraining the patient if necessary. Step six, continue cooling until the rectal temperature shows between 102 and 102.5 degrees Fahrenheit. Immediate follow-up care may include an EKG, a chest x-ray, and a urine sample with other labs ordered as clinically necessary. Someone should accompany the patient at all times to be sure there is not a clinical relapse.